A very good morning to all of you. Myself, Uma Sharma, Assistant Professor in EC Department of Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College. So, welcome to the lecture series of Integrated Circuit that is KEC 501. Here we are discussing the uh, important topics of Unit 3. So, before starting the main topic of Unit 3, just have a look of operational amplifier. So, the um, content of this presentation or this lecture is introduction to operational amplifier. Then we will discuss the concept of virtual ground and we will see the different application of op-amp. These applications includes linear part that means linear applications of op-amp as well as non-linear application of op-amp. So, let us start with the introduction part. So, op-amp is an integrated circuit which can be used to perform the various linear, non-linear mathematical operations and definitely uh, op-amp is having very high gain because we are uh, designing an amplifier circuits using operational amplifier. So, it is a direct coupled high gain amplifier and also the op-amp can operate both the signals AC and DC. This is the symbolic representation of op-amp where there are two terminals. One is positive, second one is the negative and this amplifier is designed to amplify the difference of these two signals. So, uh, this is the stage where we will use the differential amplifier. It is having one output terminal and these are the supply like VCC and VEE. So, it is having dual supply. So, there are total 5 terminals of op-amp. The basic difference between amplifier and operational amplifier is that if you pass any signal with the amplifier, so let us say this is a input signal V in and the gain of this amplifier let us say is A, then output will equals to a into V in. Now, let us suppose there is a noise signal which is overlapped with the input, then output will equals to A times of V in plus A times of V noise. So, that means amplifier amplify the noise signal with the same amplitude. So, if the strength of noise signal is very high in that case even you can lose your input signal. So, this is the problem with the normal amplifier. So, to avoid this problem or to um, improve the performance of this signal we are having this circuit that is operational amplifier and if I represent it with a block this is op-amp and now suppose there is a input signal V in that is applied at both terminal plus and minus and here is one output V out and if gain is A then output will equals to A times of V in at positive terminal minus V in at negative terminal. So, if I consider that V in at positive node is represented by V 1 and V in at in negative node is represented by V2, then I can write V output is equals to A times of V1 minus V2. Now, consider that if is there, there is a noise signal or noise voltage Vn which is uh, present at the input node, then V output will equals to A times of V1 plus Vn minus V2 plus Vn. And you can say that you can see from this equation that will become V1 minus V2 plus Vn minus Vn and Vn Vn cancel out. So, A will equals to uh, sorry V output will equals to A times of V1 minus V2. So, this is how you can remove the presence of noise from the output. So, operational amplifier is a magical device in which the noise amplification is almost 0. Ideally, it is 0, but practically 
we are having one term that is known as CMRR. Ideally, it is having infinite value, but practically it is having some finite value and this show that there is a um, common mode gain, but ideally the common mode gain is 0. If there is a, uh, there is a signal which is common to both the terminal, definitely that, that will cancel out. So, this is how we can uh, cancel the noise which is present generally at the input stage of any communication block. And uh, this is the basic difference between the amplifier and operational amplifier. Now, uh, let us see what is the virtual ground concept of operational amplifier. This is very important topic of uh, OPAM and it is also very basic questions. So, actual mein, uh, the virtual means not real. So, there is no real ground present at the operational amplifier. but uh, due to the high input impedance and high gain of op-amp, there is a virtual ground which, which is present at the inverting node. So, let us have the symbol of op-amp which is having two terminal. One is this is known as inverting terminal and this is known as non-inverting terminal. This is output and if gain, if it is having finite gain of A, then V output is equals to. So, uh, if this gain is infinite, so in that case, this V1 minus V2 is equals to V0 divided by A. If I put the value of A equals to infinite, so that will comes 0 and I can write V1 equals to V2. So, V1 is the voltage at this node we have considered this V1. So, if V1 equals to V2 from this expression, I can write the voltage at this node is also equals to V1. So, if it is at ground, then definitely V2 will equals to 0. But actually, it is not connected with the ground. But virtually, we have, we have derived that V1 must be equals to V2. So, mathematically, V1 equals to V2. That is why we are saying this node is at the virtual ground. It is not at the real ground, but it is at the virtual ground. For example, if there is a, uh, th th there is some voltage connected at this non-inverting node, that means V1 is having some fixed value. In that case, definitely the V2 node will equals to the same value. So, that concept is known as virtual short circuit. So, one term is virtual ground, when this non-inverting node is at the ground potential, then it is known as concept of virtual ground and if the non-inverting node is at some finite value, then it is known as virtual short circuit. So, uh, this concept is very, very useful in every application of operational amplifier. In this unit, we will discuss de different, different application of operational amplifier and we will do the analysis of that particular circuit. So, while uh, doing the analysis of this operational amplifier applications, we have to use this concept of virtual ground and virtual short circuit. So, now we can start the application part. So, uh, there are two category of the operational amplifier applications. One is linear. So, if there is a linear relation exist between input and output, linear relation means if this is input and this is output, so this should be the relation. It is the meaning of linear relation. So, if linear relation exists in between input and output, then these applications are known as linear applications. And if there is a non-linear relation between input and output, in that case applications are known as non-linear application of op-amps. So, non-linear application includes log and anti log amplifiers. There are some more applications like peak detector, sample and hold circuit, where operational amplifier is used to implement the nonlinear applications. So, uh, I hope uh, you understand the basic difference between linear and nonlinear. If linear relation exists between input and output, then these applications are known as 
linear applications. If there is non-linear relation between input and output, then applications are known as non-linear application of op. So, first linear application of op amp is inverting amplifier. So, just have a look to the circuit. The input is, is applied at the inverting node. So, that is why it is known as inverting amplifier. Here, this non-inverting node is at the positive, uh, sorry, is at the ground potential. So, according to the concept of virtual ground, the voltage at this node is equals to 0 and the current in this op amp is always 0 because the input resistance is infinite for the operational amplifier. So, if input resistance is infinite, that means input current is equals to 0. So, now you uh, for inverting amplifier, we can derive the expression for V output or we can derive the relation between the V input and V output and we can prove that this is the linear application of op amp. So, to derive the relation, let us uh, see there is a current which is flowing in this R in register, let us say it is I in and also there is a current flowing in the RF register, let us say it is IF. So, I in will equals to direction of current is like this. So, that will equals to V in minus 0 divided by R in. This is equation 1. To calculate I RF, let us have the voltage difference across this RF. So, 0 minus V out divided by Rf. If the current going in this direction is 0, that means I in is equals to I Rf because this current will flow like this. So, if I equate these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2, I can write V in by R in is equals to minus V out by R f and from there you can write V output is equals to minus R f by R n into V in where R f by R n is the gain and here you can write V output is equals to A into V in. So, A is the gain of this inverting amplifier and this minus sign represent the 180 degree phase shift and that means there is a linear relation exist between input and output. So, this is the inverting amplifier, one of the linear application of op amp. Let us have the second application that is non-inverting amplifier. The only difference is that now we have applied input at the positive terminal and at the inverting node there is a feedback because uh, operational amplifier is having very high gain. Ideally, it is having infinite gain. So, if gain is infinite, then we cannot use this gain because for op amp, there is a maximum supply voltages plus minus VCC or for 741 IC, we have seen in the previous lectures, this value is plus minus 15. So, that means no op amp can give the output which is greater than plus minus 15 volt. So, that means it is voltage saturated device. So, if it voltage saturated, then how we can use this infinite gain? If gain is infinite, that, that represents input, uh, even input is 0, in that case also you will get the infinite output. So, we cannot use this infinite output. That is why we require some methodology by which we can reduce that gain. So, to reduce this gain for amplification application, in all the applications, we have to apply negative feedback to reduce the gain. So, this RF and RG are representing the negative feedback which is used to reduce the gain of this amplifier. The name non-inverting is because input is applied at positive terminal. So, that means we can apply input at negative terminal as well as on the uh, positive terminal or we can apply input at both the terminals. But in any case, the feedback should be at the negative terminal only. So, let us derive the relation between V output and V in for this. So, here also 
According to the concept of virtual short circuit, the potential at this node will equals to V in like we have do for the previous configuration where uh, the concept of virtual ground is applicable. So, now the virtual short circuit concept is applicable over there. So, if it is V in again you have to mark that the current going in this op amp is equals to 0. This is 0. Now, the current going in this direction you know the potential at each node and easily you can calculate i r f that means current in this register and definitely if current uh, going to the device is 0 so that will equals to i r g so i r f will equals to v out minus v in upon r f and that is equals to i r g and that is equals to V in minus 0 by Rg. So, from here you can write Rg by Rf into V out minus V in is equals to V in and if you solve this expression you will get V output is equals to 1 plus Rf by Rg into V in. So, here this is the gain of non inverting amplifier, and again you can write V output is equals to A times of V in, or I can write V output is proportional to V in. So, again there is a linear relation exists between input and outputs. So, that is why non inverting amplifier is also a linear application of op amp. Now, let us see the another application of op amp in the same um, domain like in linear case. So, this is the differential amplifier here input is provided at the negative terminal as well as at the positive terminal, but negative feedback is there. The feedback is at the negative terminal only. So, to solve this circuit we have to use the superposition theorem. So, first make this V2 equals to 0 and calculate V out 1. So, V out put 1 will be equals to if this is 0 that means this voltage is also 0. Now, this this op amp will behave like a inverting amplifier because input V1 is applied at the negative terminal. So, for the inverting amplifier V out 1 will equals to minus R f means R 3 by R 1 into V 1 into V 1 just a second. Okay. Similarly, just make V 1 equals to 0 and calculate V out 2. So, if V 1 equals to 0, if this is 0 that means we have to calculate V V over there and this V V will equals to V 2 just apply the voltage divider over here V 2 upon R 4 upon R 2 plus R 4. So, this is the value of V V and if it is non inverting amplifier that means the gain of non inverting amplifier A is equals to 1 plus R F by R G that we have seen in the previous slide. So, here the R f is equals to here R f equals to R 3 and R g equals to R 1. So, by adding these value we can calculate the value of V out 2 and the value of V out 2 will equals to 1 plus R 3 by R 1 multiply by V b. Just by adding these two expressions for V out 1 and V out 2, you will get a equation for V output which is equals to R 3 upon R 1 into V 2 minus V 1. Again, you can see that this R 3 by R 1 is the gain and this V output is proportional to V 2 minus V 1 and this can be written as V i d. So, 
output is directly proportional to the difference, difference of input signal. So, again this is the linear application of OPAM. Now, come to the another linear application of OPAM which is a integrator. So, just by replacing this RF by C, you can make a integrator as we have seen in the definition of operational amplifier, we can perform different mathematical operations using OPAM. So, integrator is one of them. So, just uh, see that it is a inverting amplifier, nothing but simple inverting amplifier and for inverting amplifier, you know the gain that is RF by R1. So, directly you can calculate the value of V output or you can solve this circuit by using this method like the current in R1 is equal to V in by R and that is equals to the current flowing in the capacitor and the current flowing in the capacitor can be re, uh, written as C dB by dt and where dV is equals to the voltage difference that is this can be written as 0, this is 0 volt, this is V output. So, V equals to means voltage across this capacitor that is equals to V that is equals to 0 minus V out. So, you can route, write it minus sign we can put over there and this is V output. So, just by uh, to calculate V output we have to integrate this equation and from where you can get dV output is equals to minus 1 upon R into C integration of 0 to T V in into dt. So, this is how you will get the integration of input. So, definitely this is the gain of the circuit and here you are getting the integration. Similarly, you can design a differentiator just by replacing R in by C and you can design a differentiator. So, here again you can calculate the relation between input and output. So, if V s is the input signal over there and this node is definitely will be at the ground potential due to the concept of virtual ground. So, the current flowing in capacitor can be given as C d V s by d t and that current because current going in this op amp is 0. So, that current can be given by that current will be equal to the current flowing in the R and that can be given as 0 minus V o upon R. So, from where you can write V output is equals to minus R C d V s by d t. So, this gives you the differentiate or uh, differentiation of input signal where input is V s. So, this is how you can implement differentiator using OPAM. Now, come to the non-linear application of OPAM. So, these are the non-linear application of OPAM log, anti-log amplifier, voltage comparator, shimmy trigger, multi vibrator, precision rectifier and peak detectors. So, uh, I hope you have already studied about the voltage comparator, shimmy trigger and uh, multi vibrator circuit in your previous case, uh, previous subject that is in analog circuits. Now, uh, let us discuss the log and anti log amplifier. So, as the name suggests, log amplifier is designed to calculate the log of input signal, whereas anti log uh, amplifier is used to produce the anti log of the input. So, definitely if it is a non-linear application of op-amp, so we require some non-linear device in the circuit. So, now we will use diode or transistor in our inverting and non-inverting configuration. So, this is the simple structure of log amplifier. In diagram 1, log amplifier is designed using the diode. So, in feedback path, we have added one diode. Whereas, in diagram 2, again a log amplifier is designed using the another non-linear device that is transistor. So, here BJT is used. 
So, uh, in both the cases, because diode is non-linear and transistor is non-linear, the output will be same. The uh, if if you compare both the circuits, you will find that this transistor is nothing but diode connected transistor. Diode connected transistor means here the base is grounded. So, that means one terminal is at the zero potential, there are only two terminals. So, uh, it will it will behave like a diode only and you know the current equation of diode at uh, BJT is almost same. So, here in this lecture, I will explain you the log amplifier using the BJT. So, let us draw the circuit for log amplifier using BJT. So, definitely it is inverting configuration and in place of feedback a transistor is used. So, base of this transistor is grounded, this is R input, here V input is applied, this is transistor Q and gain of this transistor let us say is infinite uh, A or uh, ideally it should be infinite. So, do not write this A because for calculation generally we use the ideal configuration. So, this is the log amplifier using the BJT. Now, if you want to derive the relation between V input and V output, again you have to mark these points like uh, this is at the positive node. So, this is at 0 potential, again the current flowing in this circuit is 0. So, that means current in this circuit will equals to current flowing in this circuit. So, I input you can write I input is equals to V i minus 0 upon R i to write the current in this transistor that is I output and that is equals to I c we can equate it with I c because transistor is having collector terminal this is the collector terminal. So, I c you know the current equation of I c that is equals to I s e to the power V b e by V t. Here this base terminal, this base terminal is at 0 potential. So, that will become I s e to the power V b e will equals to 0 minus V e. So, that can be written as minus of V e by V t. And if you see the see from the diagram, this is V e and this V e is equals to V output. So, from here you can write I c equals to I s e to the power minus V o by V t. And this I c is equals to I input and you can write that is equals to V i by R i and that is equals to I s e to the power minus V o by V t. If you take the anti log on both the sorry uh, take log on both the side. So, you will get minus V o by V t will equals to log of V i by I s into R i and from here you can write V output equals to minus V t log of V input by I s R i. So, you can see that the V output is equals to the logarithmic of V input. From the previous slide you can see this expression where V t is equals to 0 0.025 volt L n V in and this is the I s reverse saturation current and this is R 1 this list. So, this is how you can derive the relation between input and output for logarithmic amplifier and similarly you can uh, do for the no, uh, anti log amplifier the only difference here the transistor is attached at the input side and you can derive the relation with the similar fashion just by equating these two currents just by equating these two current you will find that the V output is equals to minus of R f and this is again reverse saturation current that is I s anti log of L n 
v input upon v t. So, here from this circuit you will get the anti log of the input signal. So, these are the different applications of uh, operational amplifier in linear and non-linear domain. So, this is all from my side. Thank you so much.